Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Grace Episcopal Church. Let us stand and rejoice in our God, singing number 544 in your blue hymnal, number 544, Jesus Shall Reign. Again, it's good to have you with us. We continue our service on page 355 in your Book of Common Prayer, the Red Book. Page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we, may be, that we may perfectly love you and magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. If you are able, please kneel with me or remain standing, whichever is more prayerful. Our colic prayer can be found on page two of your bulletin at the top. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy that your church throughout the world may preserve with steadfast faith in the confession of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we hear God's sacred words. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verses 1 through 7. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes to open doors before him, and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I shall call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one beside me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make weal and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 96, verses 1 through 9. We will read the psalm responsively by half verse. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations. And his glory among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. Oh, the majesty and magnificence of his presence. Oh, the power and the splendor of the sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, your, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his source. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons we prove to be among you for your sake. 
And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report, <clears throat> excuse me, report about us what kind of welcome we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. The word of the Lord. Please stand with me as we sing our gospel sequence hymn, number 628 in your blue hymnal. We'll sing the first two verses before the gospel and then the third verse after. Help us, O Lord, to learn. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. This is from chapter 22, verses 15 through 22. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent his disciples to him along with the Herodians saying, teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us, then, what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
May what I am about to say be in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. How many of you love game night? Do you have game night at your home or had at your home? Do you like to play games? One of the most popular games that uh, it, there is is Monopoly. Now, if you've ever played Monopoly, it tests you and tests everyone who comes to play that game. If you think about it, the most patient person when playing Monopoly can become the most greediest, intensified person after you play the game, after you want to have boardwalk and do not pass go or if you're trying to get out of jail. The game is about you becoming more wealthier than the other person. And so gaming is sometimes the things that we time, time to get into and sometimes we find ourselves distracted with about who we are. In our scriptures today, God is recognizing us and recognizing the very fact that there are things in the world that need to be recognized by their name. And so he identifies and he knows that these, these uh, Pharisees and the Herodians uh, who follow Herod are trying to trip Jesus up. And they're trying to play the game, the game of manipulation, a game of that how we can find ourselves not being recognized as who we are, that we are God's highly favored. God wants us to know in this life and in the next, from the very beginning of time, the time when you are marked by the sign of faith, God knows you personally. Charles, Bethany, Robert. He walks, God walks with us by name. Why do you think Jesus says, give to the emperor what is the emperor and give what God to God? It's because all is God's. All is God and all that is about. It is not about a game board of things and what we take with us in this life. It is about what we take into the next life and how we treat one another with respect and dignity. Even in our first reading from Isaiah to Paul talking to the people of Thessalonia, he's reminding us that all of us are a part of God's grace in this life. And how we recognize and being recognized by our names is important. No one likes to be recognized by, hey, you. How many of us prefer to be called by our name? Some of us like nicknames. Some of us have different ways of that we are approached, like on our our uh, Facebook sign, our social media. The name is all that we are. And how we are called by name is how God recognizes us. But do we put on God? Do we call upon God in our prayer? Paul tells us that we need to lift up and give and ask God for direction in our lives. And so we are a part of of God's grace. Another game that I really enjoyed playing is, and we play it in, in our family night is the game Operation. You know it? How many of you ever buzz the buzzer with your tweezers? <laughs> that game is, I think, remarkably what Jesus is trying to help us understand that God loves us as well. See, the game is about taking out and getting all the pieces that are broken healing the pieces that need to be taken away from broken bones to mucus or whatever other creepy thing that is inside of our bodies, we pull out and we make well. Jesus wants the same thing for us. He calls us by name to help us become well and to know that we are not forgotten. In our faith, we also do fun things like we make the sign of the cross. Some of us 
make and kiss a medallion of our Christian faith before we go up to the bat or the batter's box. For some, it is maybe kneeling before you go to bed at night and calling upon God to be with you as you go to sleep. Maybe you started your day with a meditation. We call upon God in different ways and we put on God because we ask God to be with us just as God calls us by name to help us in our life. The games in our lives, we can think that this is all a game, but the reality is we all are walking on a journey with God. And as Christians, we walk with God so that we know that we're not alone ever, that we're loved and appreciated by Robert, Bethany, or Charles. We are called because God wants us to know God in our own lives, to be appreciated always, and to know that even as times get rough, you're not alone. God is with us in these things too. And even with a denarius that isn't supposed to be in the temple, by the way, those Pharisees would have the accessibility to see what that denarius was and approach Jesus and give it to him and let him know whose head that is. Even the things that are unclean at times, we invite God to help make good. The world is a funny place. Sometimes it is going our way. Sometimes we're kind of swimming up river. The world is a good place. Let us make it a good place. By a kind word of what we call each other by name. And not just by hi or hey you. Let us be more personable. Let us be God's instrument in the world of love and forgiveness so that we don't have to be on the fringe, that we listen and when we talk to each other, we hear each other. Amen. Friends, let us now stand and profess our faith. That which we help call God by name on page 358 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 358 with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Turning to page four in your bulletin, let us offer our prayers as people of God. Page four in your bulletin. If you are able, please kneel with me or remain standing as we offer our prayers. 
Sisters and brothers, beloved by God, grace to you and peace. Let us pray to the Holy One, saying, Be gracious to us, O God, show us your mercy. We always give thanks to you, O God, for the Church constantly remembering before you its work of faith, labor of love, and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. We especially pray in thanksgiving for all who are celebrating their birthdays this week, Kathy Neer and Mike Livingston. We pray for all couples celebrating their wedding anniversary this week. We give thanks to our church forebearers and all those who came before that laid a holy foundation 150 years ago of Grace Church. Inspire us always with your Holy Spirit. Be gracious to us, O God. Almighty God, make us more like your Son, Jesus, who did not regard people with partiality. We especially pray for our nation's House of Representatives that they too may look to you in finding a new House Speaker and so to help find the right direction to our national and international problems. May we love justice. May we be gracious with all people. Be gracious to us, O God. God, our King, the earth shakes in your presence. All that is belongs not to us, but to you. May we be good stewards of all you have created. Be gracious to us, O God. Holy One, you answer those who call upon you. Hear the voices of the weak and wronged. May Paducah and our surrounding communities Know and experience your presence. Be gracious to us, O God. Great Lord, give your people rest. Cover the sick and sorrowful with your healing hand. Let us offer our prayers for the innocent suffering because of the wars in the Holy Land and Ukraine. May people and leaders step forward to find peaceful solutions to all conflicts. For those prayers are written in our book of prayerful intentions and for our parish and military prayer list found in our bulletin. May the lonely and forgotten find favor in your sight. Be gracious to us, O God. Living God, you have rescued the dying and the dead from the coming wrath through the death and resurrection of your Christ. We especially pray for Father Kempton Baldridge and his family as they mourn the loss of their mother, Edie Landell Dunn Baldridge, who passed away this past Wednesday. We also continue to pray for those lives have been lost in the wars within the Holy Land, Ukraine, and all those we have held dear in our hearts. May our voices blend with theirs as they proclaim your greatness and worship around your throne forever. Let light perpetual shine upon them. Be gracious to us, O God. Show us your mercy. You alone, O God, our Lord. And there is no other. Formed of your image, we bear the imprint of your face, and your name is engraved on our hearts. Hear our prayers this day and all week long. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Turning back once again to our Book of Common Prayer, let us turn to page 360. Page 360. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name, amen. 
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us extend to each other a sign of Christ's peace and love. Peace, Jerry. God's peace. Bob. God's peace be with you. God's peace be with you. God's peace, Millen. Jeannie, God's peace. God's peace. Jim, Emily, God's peace. Paul, God's peace. Hey, Juliet, God's peace. Peace be with you, Chuck. Ch Charlie, sorry. Charlie. <laughs> peace be with you. Bill, God's peace. Welcome back, guys. You survived. God's <laughs> peace. <laughs> Please be seated and have a, our announcements. It is great to have you here. Thank you so much for coming and joining us here at Grace Episcopal Church today for our worship service and giving God praise. I'd like to thank uh, Bill and Terry Coscarelli. I was just telling them they survived. They just came through a wedding for their daughter, Sarah, and uh, their marriage to Keaton uh, Sizemore and the beautiful altar flowers are in dedication of their wonderful celebration and happy time last Saturday that they had fun with. And now we have a very special announcement about the cramming of the crib. That crib is getting a workout. I'm so thankful to you all. We have already been able to send 165 boxes to PCM because they needed it right now. So now is no time to let up. Put your foot on the gas. We want to get to 300. We need to surpass that. And we have some very enterprising parishioners who have just had macaroni and cheese shipped to the church. Oh. Which you don't even have to get out of your pajamas to do that. So I know that each and every one of you can do that. If you haven't made a donation yet, we're going to cram that crib. We've got one more week. So get busy. Thank you, Trish. Yeah, help bring some mac and cheese. PCM uh, has been letting us know that uh, there's a food shortage in the, in the county and in the area, so any mac and cheese you can help us with would be greatly appreciated as we celebrate our 150th anniversary. And that crib is found in, in Fletcher Hall right through the red door here. Also, please join us we, uh, for hospitality right after our service uh, in Fletcher Hall. And also, uh, we, I want to thank the vergers, the men, and uh, Linda, who helped uh, with our vergers breakfast this morning. Yeah, you, you missed a wonderful breakfast, uh, and is one we do once a month uh, during the school year. And so we greatly appreciate the men, uh, especially John Shadle, for all the hard work uh, they do to help bring us together in community. We start, uh, uh, excuse me, we have, we continue our, um, our Wednesday evening uh, potluck, and that continues uh, this Wednesday at 5.15. We're doing, we're eating with our fingers, appetizer foods, this, this Wednesday at 5.15, and then we have godly play right afterwards, and adult Ed, Jim Moss, uh, is back and being able to continue his series on finding peace in troubled times and uh, using Holy Scripture. So I hope you can come and join us uh, for both of these wonderful events of community. Also, uh, this afternoon, we uh, will be, uh, you should have seen the flyer that as you came in uh, when you got your bulletin today, uh, Pantsuit Politics, the podcasters and authors, uh, Sarah uh, Holland and Beth Silvers will be right here uh, to help us try to figure out different strategies of how do we talk to one another as people of faith in difficult political times. And so I hope you can come and join us for some fun conversation uh, with the, these two wonderful women of God. I will be out of the office uh, this Thursday morning. I'll be at, uh, at Camp All Saints with the bishop and other clergy for our fall clergy conference. And then I'll be uh, back that later that afternoon uh, if you're trying to get a hold of me on Thursday. 
Also, if you're new to Grace Episcopal and have been coming for a month or almost a year or so, please come and join us uh, this Friday for a welcome dinner at the Olive Garden at 6 p.m. Please RSVP to the parish office if you are able to come and join us so that I can get enough uh, uh, table space uh, for all of our guests. Hannah Shelley and her husband Jacob and I and my wife Susie will be there uh, hosting uh, this wonderful gathering. So you get to meet some other people who are on the same journey as you are. And so I hope you can come, you can welcome, you can bring the, your children as well. Just get uh, RSVP to the parish office uh, by uh, Thursday, if at all possible. And today we start our pledge drive for our congregation to ha start help working on our budget for next year. And today we have a very special stand-in. Uh, Jane Taylor couldn't be able to come today, and so Emmett Moorhead has been gracious enough to uh, stand in today uh, in, instead of Jane. Jane is sick, and so Emmett, is, we greatly appreciate him coming and talking about how he likes coming to Grace Episcopal and sharing a little about what that's like for him. Um, hello, my name is Emmett Moorhead, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about what grace means to me. For me, grace means community. The congregation includes my friends, family, and the ones I look up to. Grace is a place for me to express myself and learn about God and my faith in Him. My family moved to this church when I was about 10, and I knew a few classmates, and that was about it. Martha, Chase, and Charles were very welcoming and kind. Hannah wasn't here yet, but she would definitely be on that list. Um, and after about a year, I found a passion to learn more about God and my faith. Later, I became an acolyte, which taught me reverence, commitment, and dedication and what that looks like in the church. I always thought it would be so cool to wear the same color ribbons as the elder kids, so I worked hard and kept up with it. Now I've been acolyte for four years. Also, I'm in the choir. Ever since I was in fourth grade, I participated in the school choir, and it has always been my thing. I love choir so much, so I joined last year in this choir. Linda, Jim, and Emily were ecstatic to have me join, and it has been so much fun trying new songs and praising the Lord in a way other than prayer. And finally, youth group. Youth group has been one of the greatest things for me in the past four years. It has brought me friendship, family, and a safe place to express myself. Hannah, who is one of my greatest supporters in our youth minister, and I, she will forever have an impact on my life. And thank you to my teammates in youth group, who are my best friends, and I will always be grateful for. Thank you. Awesome job. Good job, Emmett. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much, Emmett. And this year, our pledge uh, drive, our theme is abundance and in being rooted in Christ. And so uh, Emmett is a wonderful part of that root system of our family here at our church. You'll be hearing more and getting uh, a letter here this week in the mail uh, for those of you who are our members and are registered with us. Uh, please know that the ministries can't happen by themselves. And so your wonderful support and financial support is greatly appreciated in however you can give and support this church. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up as a sacrifice unto God.
wash away my iniquity, cleanse me of my sins. We continue our service on page 369 in your Book of Common Prayer, the page 369. Your responses are in italics with this Eucharistic prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, of all things came to be the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets, and their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we, in turn, we, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust. We turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return. Through the prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By your son, by your sins, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining the with the heavenly chorus, with prophets and apostles and martyrs, and with all those in every generation, you have looked, we have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. 
gave thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await his day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and fathers of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve you serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Wherever you are in your faith journey, all baptized Christians are welcome at this communion rail and at this altar. We have the opportunity to receive the common cup today to drink from or you can dip your uh, bread wafer into the intinction cup and to dip it there as well. If you have a need a gluten-free uh, wafer, we also have those as well that have been blessed. Just indicate to me as you come forward that you are in need of one. If you are just on your journey and need to pray, just come forward and pray with me and our other Eucharistic ministers and just by crossing your arms, your hands over your chest to offer prayer for one another. All are welcome.
choir if you'd like to come forward.
Let us offer our prayer after communion found on page 365, page 365. And that is in the uh, Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of joy. Give it our joy, Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth and be the church. Alleluia, alleluia.